In this clip, we're going to take a look at a couple of different ways you can add animation to the hair. Now, the first method we're going to look at does not involve dynamics. It actually involves keyframing our hair. To do that, we need to go ahead and add a modifier here, and the one we want is the guide modifier. Go ahead and add that in, and you can see it'll add the guide right there. Here in the attribute editor, in order to get this to work, I need to come down here under input guide and create some guides. Go ahead and create them, and you can see there are our guides. Now, you will notice when I actually add the guides in, it does actually kind of push the hair down a little bit, and we'll discuss later how we can avoid this. So once we've created these guides, what we can do now is come over here into the guide, the in guide. Let me go ahead and give myself a little bit more space there. Oops, a little bit more. Nope, won't let me. So, and then over here, we can open up the sculpt layer. So I'll go ahead and enable the sculpt layer. And let's go ahead and make a quick sculpting change. I'll go ahead and maybe just use my grab brush. And what we'll do is maybe bring some of the hair kind of around front over here. Uh, that's not actually not looking all that great. I think I might actually use my comb brush instead. And let me go under the tool settings here, make sure collide with meshes is on. And we'll just kind of comb the hair down over his face over here. It looks like it actually got a little bit stretched there, but for the sake of just showing you how this works, we should be okay. So we can see that we've now positioned the hair over here. And I obviously can change this using this sculpt layer right here. You know, we can maybe bring some of this hair forward here. So as if the hair is kind of just kind of flowing that way. Okay. So in order to animate, this is actually really, really easy. Let me get rid of my outliner, give myself a little bit more space there. All I need to do is keyframe my sculpt layer. So here, maybe at frame one, I'll put it to zero, add a keyframe. Maybe here at frame 15, where he drops his head, I'll go ahead and key that on. Now, if your auto key is on, that'll just go ahead and do it for you. And you could see right there that now as he moves his head down, it animates. And maybe when I go here, maybe to frame 25, I could always add another sculpt layer and animate that, or of course I can bring this one back. So, Anyway, that's one way to animate the hair. I'll be honest, I don't really use this one all that often, but I do see the merit in it. Now, the issue that we're having with the hair kind of collapsing down when we add the guide modifier can actually be fixed. Let me go ahead and delete all of that right there. And it can be fixed by instead using a linear wire. So I'll select the linear wire over here. We'll come over here and hit create. And you can see the linear wire won't influence the existing hair. It actually just matches the existing hair. And now I can go ahead and do the exact same thing. I could come over here to my sculpt layer, turn on edit. We'll go ahead and you know, brush the hair over a little bit just to make some change there. Doesn't have to be anything huge. There we go. And then what we'll do is at frame one, we'll key it at zero. And again, maybe at frame 15, we'll go ahead and key that on. And there you go. You could see those curves will animate. And again, make as many sculpt layers as you need for each pose of the hair. And you could theoretically give it the appearance of some animation. Where this is a little bit more useful is not necessarily an animation, but as you maybe strike certain positions on fur, if you need the fur to bend or shape in a certain way, they're almost like blend shapes for the hair. Okay. So now the other way to animate is using dynamics. I'm going to go ahead and delete this linear wire here, and it's going to leave these in guide shapes here. So we'll go ahead and delete those as well. Now I have run into a little bit of a bug in Maya when it comes to adding these dynamics, and it has to do with the wrap modifier method that I'm using for my hair geometry. It's again attached to the mesh through a wrap, and that just seems to cause problems where the hair won't stick. So I found the easiest way to fix this is I'll go ahead and delete the history on this piece of geometry. You can see it won't follow along, and I'll just parent it to the joints. So I'll just maybe grab the hair geo here, grab this joint here, hit P for parent, there we go, it's attached, and I find that fixes the issue. Okay, so let's go ahead, I can actually hide those joints. So let's go ahead and see how we can add dynamics. It's actually really easy. You could use either the guide or the linear wire. I don't want to mess up the shape of the hair, so I'm going to choose the linear wire. Oops, I need to select the hair. 
There we go. Add a linear wire. We'll go into the linear wire right over here. And just as before, I need to hit create. And create's going to make some curves. And by the way, we didn't cover this just in the last linear wire we looked at. But if you want to add more of these, you can open up the in guide here, come down to the in guide base, and you can change the density, which will change the count of these hairs. You could also manually add them in. I'm fine with the amount I have here. It's not ideal. I'd probably want a little bit more. Maybe I do I'll go up to 1.5 over here. Just add a few more hairs. And we'll go back to the linear wire. Now, it does kind of yell at you. You'll get little errors down here at the bottom that after you make a change, you need to update the reference state. So just be sure that's clicked. And then all you need to do from here is hit Make Wires Dynamic. Go ahead and just reset this, and you can just use the default options over here. I'm not going to do any collisions because I don't need to collide with this mesh anyway. I'll just hit Apply and Close. Give that a second. It's going to run through and make all of these guides now animatable wires. Again, it's yelling at me that I need to update the reference. OK, sure. Hit Update right there. Hit Play, and you'll see that we now have some animation. Of course, it looks horrible. So what's going on here? You can see the hair is not actually really matching the wires. Well, one issue is we have no collider in here. So I am going to add a collider. I'll grab this collide mesh right here. And we'll go up to Effects, go up to End Cloth, and create a passive collider. I'll go ahead and close that back off. And let's see what we have now. So it should look a little bit better, but you'll still find that it doesn't follow all that well. You could see it doesn't really match the curves. And I'm not sure why this is the preset, but if you take a look here under linear wire and kind of come up a little bit, it has to do with this magnitude. Right now it's affecting the root and the tip 50%. To make this follow the wires a little closer, we'll actually put the root to zero and the tip to 100%. And you could see now it's going to follow those wires pretty darn close. And of course you can make any adjustments you need here. And some other things, for example, you'll notice here that the hairs kind of seem to follow almost just chunks, right? Each wire kind of has hairs assigned to it. You can make adjustments here by upping the smoothness a little bit. Be careful going too high, but you can see that can kind of blend the hairs a little bit. You can also up the breakage, which will, you can see right here, have certain hairs just not follow. Be careful, though, because when they don't follow, it can sometimes look a little unnatural. And from here, it's honestly just about going to your outliner and setting up your hair system. This is the exact same type of hair system that we've dealt with when we looked at nHair, all of the same settings. I can come in here to my dynamic properties. You know, to, I can go ahead and let me rewind here. I'll set up uh, no stretching on the hair. I'll go ahead and maybe up my compression resistance, add some bend resistance over there. Maybe I'll come down here to my forces and we'll add a little bit of damping maybe a little bit more drag, maybe a little bit of motion drag. And you'll see that the hair will begin to behave, you know, just as we would expect. You know, we could also go into the nucleus and change the scale of the simulation. And by the way, if you don't want to see these curves over here, you can just hide the in guide right here in the outliner. And there you go. So again, everything else from here is just the way we worked with setting up the end hair before, so you're free to go in there and play around as necessary. But that's a quick look at a couple of different ways to animate hair inside of this new XGen Interactive Grooming System.